Now I'm Krithika Bhatt, I'm with Oracle, have been with Oracle since February um, 1996. And I'm part of Oracle's Applications IT group. So a little bit about the group I work for. You know, I mentioned we're Oracle Applications IT. We're called Oracle Applications Lab. We implement Oracle solutions for internal use and we operate those systems. Now that we're in the cloud, what we're finding is SaaS is pristine. I love it as an IT person. SaaS is pristine and you know, we all have our proprietary requirements. Um, you can extend that. In, in, in our world, we extend it using PaaS applications that talk to our SaaS um, applications. But what we find now is a SaaS vendor, for, for us it's Oracle, releases smaller updates every quarter. And because you know, we haven't got a customized system, we are able to you know, consume that update. Now those updates will come with standard things that the vendors want to release in terms of security and performance. But very importantly, they come with innovations. And so with the cloud, you get the flexibility you need, you get the efficiency, but very importantly, you get the access, the access to innovation. We're now looking at what next? And that's where the topic of the day comes in, which is our emerging technologies. So let's talk about machine learning. So our applications are machine learning enabled. And at Oracle, what that means is we are running um, you know, SaaS and with it, we have adaptive intelligent apps. So as you know, um, an internal IT, we are looking at uptake of those apps. And then we also have intelligent UX, which is your um, SaaS applications itself have embedded ML, which makes it much more intelligent. With, with machine learning, there's that, you know, you, you're going from rules-based to model-driven, you're going from um, uh, static data to contextual, and you're also eventually going to go from user-driven actions to machine learning-based actions. So with the AI and machine learning, what you can do is you can do smart classification of your data. A lot of smarts on this slide, right? You can classify your data, you can classify employees by their skills, similar skills, you can classify suppliers, you can classify invoices into similar grouping. Now once you've classified all this data, then what you start to see is you, you start to see pattern recognition. You can look at the data, the smart data, and recognize the patterns. And once you start recognizing the patterns, that's where you can start to see what the actions are. So this is how you can use AI to automate and then eventually optimize. So we've been doing this for about a year now since we have most of our domains in the cloud. And just some, you know, some tips that have worked for us. Identify your business use cases. The number of times you know, I have people come up to me and say, hey, technology ABC has just been released and I want to use it. You don't jump on the technology bandwagon just because it's there. You got to see how it works for you and what business problem you want to solve. That's the mindset you need. What problem am I going to solve and where can machine learning make a difference? So start with your use cases and then you know, don't try to do too much at the beginning. You know, what you read often is a lot of people fail. They start projects and they fail because they try to do too much right away. So the whole idea is start simple, you know, identify a process that you want to optimize. But start simple. Maybe you start by saying, hey, I'm going to make sure that I can automate a lot of the data capture. Once I've automated the data capture, then I can start to look at the data. I can start to handle, you know, I can start to identify patterns. Via that, I can identify what my exceptions are. Maybe once you know what your exceptions are, you decide how you're going to automate handling of that. And eventually, you'll get to optimization. So start small and build on it. You know, because with machine learning, what you're doing is really you have these, you know, these models and you're training the model by passing it, you know, data sets, right? So you really got to have good data because if you're going to give the model garbage data, what you're going to get out is garbage results. So your data really needs to be good. And it means it has to be contextual, it has to be complete, it has to be clean. And there might be cases for master data where you can choose to enrich it. And I, and I do have some examples because examples are probably you know, clearer to explain some of these um, in these tips. Um, so now let's go to the um, use cases that we are internally looking at uh, at Oracle for our internal businesses. I'm going to categorize the ML use cases into four types of use cases. One is recommendations, two, predictions, three, pattern recognition, and four is anomaly detection, right? 
So I just want to clarify that these use cases are a combination of what we're doing internally. Some of these are already done and rolled out. We do a lot of partnership with our product groups, right? Because as I mentioned, we're a global multinational. You know, we sell hardware, software, cloud. So our requirements are pretty much largely a super set of customer requirements. So we make a great test bed before, you know, something's introduced in SaaS. You know, to be able to use it internally at Oracle and prove it out is, is invaluable. Uh, approval recommendations. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of managers here in the room. And, you know, we all get hit with a lot of recommendations. Let's take expenses. I have, um, you know, a team of 500. I have a fair amount of expenses that come my way. Um, so what we've done in, a, you know, working with our product groups, done a, you know, a little R&D project where using machine learning, we are actually making recommendations to our managers whether they should approve the expense or they should review them. Using machine learning, we're looking at the historical transactions, what was approved, what was rejected, are we seeing any patterns, and then there's recommendations made. So that's a good use case of you know, recommendation um, type of ML. Uh, the next one is prediction, right? Intelligent list of values. Now, what we've got is, you know, when I log into the SaaS applications, I used to get a bunch of icons, right? Uh, with the intelligent homepage that we have rolled out internally, another partnership with our product groups, the system knows, hey, this is Kritika who's logging in. She's an M6 level. Guess what? Right now, other M6 in the company seem to be going in a lot into the compensation application. Perhaps there's a compensation round going on, and maybe Kritika wants to go into the compensation app. We're going to predict that that's what she's going to do. And it's also, you know, Fridays, and typically Kritika seems to clear her approvals on Fridays, as do a lot of others at her level. Let's surface up that icon. So what I'm getting now is an intelligent homepage and contextual. You know, what Kritika gets versus what Anne gets are going to be different. So that's another example of a predictive ML um, use case that I've got. We're also looking at intelligent document recognition. We are constantly trying to get um, efficiencies out of our... Um, order to booking process. It's all about the customer experience. You know, want to get you know, the negotiation process and the order um, process as frictionless as possible. And we're looking at intelligent document recognition for some of our non-structured data, things like POs where the back office might have to go and you know, type in attributions. We're going to use intelli uh, intelligent uh, document recognition, which is really a mix of OCR and ML, to be able to derive all those attributes. Again, there'll be a confidence score surfaced up what it's going to mean is increasingly the green transactions are going to go through touchless. And that's how we reduce the friction. Then I want to talk about our um, procure to pay and expense to pay space. I'm going to talk about two um, supplier recommendations and intelligent payments. They go hand in hand. So um, supplier recommendations. So um, what we've got in the system is, you know, we've got what we call first data, which is supplier data, we've got you know, the, the requisitions, the, the purchase orders, the payment history, and then we have the supplier data enriched. We are uh, acquisition we had done called DataFox, which gathers a lot of information on the supplier, you know, business and company data, and the merge of that gives invaluable supplier insights. And then you know, using ML, we score or rank the suppliers using various weightage factors, and then this supplier insights can be used to optimize your procure to pay process. You can make sourcing decisions, you know which suppliers at risk and what should you do about it. And the intelligent payments part is the accounts payable manager will get recommendations saying, hey, these suppliers are candidates for you to negotiate so you can get better discounts for early payment. So now you can see how you know we can look at that procure to pay process and optimize it. And then the intelligent account derivation. This is for um, you know, invoices that don't tie to a PO. Typically, you know, an AP clerk has to go in and they need to put in all that accounting code combination data. It's manually intensive work. We're expecting ML to surface up recommendations. Again, it's looking at past history, what has been done, and surfaces up recommendation on the code combination, which the clerk can just um, you know, accept if, if it's okay. And then another thing that's going to come, which is going to reduce the, the manually intensive work, is matching. You've got invoices that are tied to a PO, but they're not matched. And ML is a great use case to do that matching. The fourth one I want to talk about is anomaly detection. And I'm sure this one resonates with all of you, uh, which is fraud detection. Now, we already have um, you know, rules-based checking at Oracle, rules-based audit. 
um, which is after the fact. And now if people know what the rules are, they can get around them. Now, I, I'm of the belief that people don't set out to do fraud, but then you have to check. Now, if, if, if someone knows, someone's intent to do fraud and they know that, hey, you know, if it's more than a thousand dollar expense report is going to get audited, they can circumvent that, right? But with model-based audit, the models are constantly changing based on the data and it's hard to circumvent. And also you don't need to maintain the models, you need to maintain the rules, someone has to code them. Um, so we do expect to have, you know, a model-based expense audit available. So rather than do spot checking of random transactions, now the model can target it can tell the auditors or managers or the employees themselves when they're um, logging something that, hey, I've detected an no anomaly. Something doesn't look right with this trans transaction compared to others. I see a duplicate or I see something wrong with it. So overall, what this is going to do is it's going to you know, reduce your fraud. It's going to make sure that you don't hold up um, transactions that are fine with the unnecessary audit and it's going to just streamline that whole uh, reimbursement process. So. Um, the idea of sharing these use cases was not for you to make, you know, take down the list of what we're doing at Oracle, but just get you thinking, right? Gives you thinking about what are potential use cases that might work for you. Some of these are going to be, you know, resonating with most of you, things like the expense audit and the approval recommendations. And hopefully this kind of triggers off thought process in you so you can look at what might work for your organization. Now I'm going to move on to the, the second topic of the day, which is um, conversational agents or chatbots as uh, most of you might know them. Now this is a great way for us to uh, you know, have extensions of the enterprise apps beyond the desktop, especially for our self-service transactions, both transactional and inquiry transactions. You can use you know, mediums other than the, the desktop. You can use SMS, you can do Slack, Alexa, you can use all these you know, mediums to have conversational agents. We have gone live in the past six months with an Oracle digital assistant. And what's already available in the um, assistant is a directory bot. Now I talked about starting simple and a directory bot's a very simple concept, right? Hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm not in the Oracle office. Um, I don't have my desktop with me and I wanna call somebody, right? Uh, I don't want to have to log into a web application. I don't want to you know, have to VPN in. At the touch of a phone, I can use my, what we call the directory bot, and I can just get the phone number. I can find who their manager is. I can do all these things. So this is something we've already rolled out globally to all our 130,000 employees, and we've had a lot of positive feedback coming in. So it's a good example of something simple, but makes a huge difference. Now, the other example I have is uh, Expense Bot. We've gone live with this a few months ago with about 1,000 users in the US. You know, we're just you know, piloting it and then shortly we ex intend to expand it um, company-wide. Uh, so it's pretty simple. I came out here in an Uber today. I'm gonna take an Uber back home to Redwood Shores and what I could do is on my phone, I can just bring up that receipt, just text it to the bot and the bot's gonna say, hey Krithika, it looks like you have a transportation and taxi expense for I think it was $42, $42 uh, date 25th June. Is this correct? If yes, let me know. Just type in a number and you're done, right? And that's it, touchless transaction. You've used intelligent character recognition to read the fields from the receipt. You've used ML to do categorization of the expense. You know the vendor, you know, based on the data that it's a transportation. Totally touchless transaction. What happens behind the scenes when I say, yep, I'm done, is it creates an expense item just like I would have done if it's a, um, in a web app and matches it with the credit card charge that comes in, matches the vendor, the amount, creates a transaction. So huge productivity savings, and unless it's an exception, I crumpled up my receipt, and the bot's going to ask me, is it $30? And I'm gonna say, no, it's 40. So um, hopefully, you know, um, this gives you an idea of the, the, the power of this bot, you know, touchless transactions, faster uh, reimbursements. I've talked about the Office of Finance. We've talked about the benefits to customer experience and employee experience. And this is how, you know, we are uh, transforming at Oracle using these technologies. And, you know, hopefully this has kind of got you thinking about what you can do internally at your organizations. Mm -hmm.